Mmm. I'm sorry, that was kind of rude. Do you want one? Today on the Extreme Channel, we're going to review the Elite Creature Collectibles, or ECC, Gizmo Maquette and find out if it's actually worth the $2,000 price tag that it has. Now, as a disclaimer, I had a few drinks before this. A few meaning like 10 or 12. But a little bit of history, I've wanted this guy for a long time. I actually own their Spike Gremlin. This piece right here from Gremlins 2. This representation of Gizmo is actually also from Gremlins 2. Now, while I didn't enjoy Gremlins 2 as much as I did Gremlins 1, I appreciated all the different Gremlins it actually gave us. So if you have no idea what Gremlins or Gizmo is, Gizmo is a Mogwai. Yeah, Mogwai. What? Mogwai. I don't know, some Chinese word. I just call him Gizmo. Popularized by a 1980s film, I believe it was released in the 80s, where this cute little fella, if he ate anything after midnight, he would turn into a gruesome gremlin. And there's a whole lot of questions that I have that actually some of them were asked in Gremlins 2. What time zone does he need to be in when he eats after midnight? What specifically is midnight? Kind of some weird rules that we never really got some answers to. He also multiplies if you throw water on him, so anytime he takes a shower, he actually has babies. Also, if he goes out in the sun to get a tan, he actually dies. But Elite Creature Collectibles made 500 of these lifelike maquettes. That's what they call them. Maquette is just a really fancy word to, I don't even know what it signifies. Even if I was sober, I wouldn't know that. But we're going to do an in-depth review on this guy and see if he's actually worth the price tag. I think I already said that, but... That's what we're gonna do today. So let's kick it off starting with concept of this piece. Now what I really like about ECC is they take a little bit of the movie flair and then they add their own touch on it. While this isn't necessarily from a specific scene in Gremlins 2, it kind of tells a story. So on the bottom here you have a museum style base which they like to do because they do have museum style quality pieces. Now on this they have a front nameplate. You guys know I hate nameplates but ECC does it on all their shit. And you have Gizmo at the front. This is towards the end of the movie where he's kind of reminiscing as Rambo. He's saving Phoebe Cates, who is hot as fuck. Let's not pretend she's not. And he created a crossbow out of a paper clip, a rubber band, some whiteout, and a pencil. He's become Rambo, and he's about to save her. However, on the back of this piece, they actually have a different scene. This is from the end of the movie, where the electrified gremlin is actually melting all the other pieces. Or maybe it's from Gremlins 1 where he actually melted. That's apparently the way they like to kill gremlins, is they like to melt them. So I like how it tells a story of the entire movie. Now, if you like a piece that is entirely screen accurate, this is not the piece for you. But personally, I really like it. It's like that other Gremlins piece I threw up. It's actually not taken specifically from a movie, but a few different scenes put together. So if I wanted to look at a movie that contains Gizmo from Gremlins 2, I think this knocks it out of the park. I think the concept's a 5 out of 5 on this piece. Now regarding the design, first let's grab the dimensions for you. So it is a little bit longer than I thought it'd be. Hey, that's what she said. But the widest point of the base is about 22 inches. The gremlin's hand adds about four inches or so. The deepest point is about 21. However, it's a very short piece. The, the tallest point is probably this fire right at about 14 and a half inches, maybe a little bit over. And the unboxing and assembly uh, was a lot of pieces, but it was pretty easy. Check it out. The weight on the box and the piece itself was a little more than I thought it would be. It did have an art box. Had a picture of the statue. ECC is pretty classy with their packaging, which also includes a COA. As you see, I have number 7 or 9 out of 500. Also came with batteries and instructions, which was a nice change. So this is the first layer. Like I said, I was kind of surprised at how many pieces there were. And then the second layer was the heavy base.
Now another cool part, it does have a light up feature. If you remove this cap right here, you can actually light up the flame. So, here, so here's a picture of it not lit up, and then here's a picture of it lit up. Now as you saw me put the headband on, the headband is mixed media. Obviously the fur on him is as, what, is as well. Is that hard to say if you're sober or you're drunk? But it's hard as, it's not hard, it's soft. It's very furry. I don't know what I'm saying, but you can put the headband wherever you want. That's 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 my that did I stutter? That's my point. You can put the headband wherever you want. So regarding the design, the only fault I really see is I think the base is a little bit too big. It takes up a little bit too much room. If you want to see where this is going to go in the Extreme Collection, it's actually going right next to the Gremlin piece. So go ahead and check out the Extreme Channel Instagram and Facebook page. The link is in the description below. That's where I'm going to post pictures of where he's at. So overall, I give the design a four out of five. Now let's jump into the paint and sculpt of this piece. Now, while Gizmo has a lot of fur or mixed media, that's kind of like what we call fur or fabric, I still think the sculpt and even the paint is pretty damn cool. Check it out. All right, so let's check this guy out. You have this sub base on the bottom, kind of the museum black style that traditionally ECC does. Cause like I said, they take pieces from a movie and they make it very museum-ish. The top part of the base is this interesting sandstone uh, brownish tan color with some spots on it, both some red and some black spots. I just wonder what the art direction on this was. It's kind of boring, but I don't know what else I would have done differently uh, to try and capture the elements of the scene that they did. The uh, silverish nameplate looks fine. Like I said, I would, have re I would have preferred that they didn't do this at all. This is actually from the second movie. It's called The New Batch. Let's look at the melted gremlin. This looks amazing, it looks real. Now, a few of the colors are a little bit offset from uh, what they look like in real life compared to the camera. But I love what they did here. I love the gloss effect. I love the black and white and yellow and green that they added. It looks like a gremlin is really melting. You can see his mouth and his teeth here. This to me is just as impressive as Gizmo, if not more so. I was kind of dripping down. They did a really, really nice job. And I think this helps justify some of the price of it. But all those different colors, look how even the eye is popped back and the red around that. Pretty darn cool. Now with Gizmo, let's look at his non-furry uh, aspects first. So I like what they did. His toenails look real. He has a translucent skin on his feet, on his hands right here. Pretty cool, a lot of detail in the ridges. And like I said, the fingernails, very impressive. Uh, a little bit of damage to my pencil when I actually installed it. This is actually a real pencil, which is kind of funny actually. But uh, everything looks very real. Here's the uh, instant glue. I initially thought it was white out in the flame. I like the translucent resin on the flame. Uh, you know, I was really going back and forth whether they should actually include this at all or not but I, uh, I appreciate the fact that they did. The rubber band actually is not a real rubber band. Everything else feels real. Take a look at his ears, you even have some veins, and I like the, the offset of the colors, the pink and flesh tones look really good. Not sure on the headband. Maybe it's because I just don't have it positioned correctly, but the fur looks great. I like how it's not just a standard brown, but you have uh, lighter and darker browns and then some whites and grays in there. Even on the front here. And then the shining uh, star of it is his portrait. Uh, whether it's around his mouth, you still have that translucent skin and that little nose, the glass eyes of his uh, big brown eyes, which is kind of what Gizmo is known for. I know uh, Rafael Roboletto actually increased, uh, did some modification to his to make it longer hair around that front of the portrait, but I think it looks great right here as well. Has a nice uh, soft feel to it. Pretty impressed with this piece, more impressed than I thought I'd be, which is always a pleasant surprise. All right, so let's try and rate the paint first. Granted, there's not a lot of paint in Gizmo other than his hands, feet, eyes, ears. Then as I talked about with the Gremlin, I think it's amazing. I love what they did with the Melting Gremlin. 
I'm going to give the paint a 5 out of 5 on this. I think it's fantastic. I really can't see any areas of improvement while the base is a little bit dull. And a lot of that ties really into the sculpt as well. Not only of the Gremlin, but Gizmo, the base. A lot of the same comments. And I think in the end, it ends up being a 5 out of 5. Which is really what you'd want it or demand it to be for such an expensive price tag for a smaller piece. You know, they made 500 of these and it was right around $2,050 with shipping in the States from Cinemaquette.com. Do I think it's worth that? Now that I have it in hand, I honestly do. I think it's worth the $2,000. However, usually when you see these resell, at least in the States, you see them resell for less. So I don't know what the value really is in the aftermarket. Not that I plan to give them up anytime soon, but I'm going to go ahead and give the value a 3 out of 5 based on those facts. But does it have the X factor? You know, one negative thing it has going for it is it is smaller, so people aren't going to be instantly drawn to it. But I think, especially if you display it right or paired with the other Gremlin, it doesn't necessarily have to be with that, but I think it helps quite a bit. I think that'll really help the X factor of this piece. But in the end, because of the fantastic paint and sculpt, I think I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 on the extreme scale. It's not a 5 out of 5 statue, but it's damn close. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Is this worth the price tag that it actually commands? It's probably a little bit harder to tell in the video. But thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Make sure to hit that like button on the way out. Subscribe if you haven't. And also drop me a comment. I really appreciate it. I'll talk to you very soon. Take care.